Today, I turn the spotlight onto a different technical indicator that could provide better trading signals than one of the most popular indicators. Back after this brief message. Darwin X is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, Darwin X is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, Darwin X itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The Relative Strength Index or RSI is one of the most used and talked about indicators. However, it does have some characteristics that mean it sometimes struggles to produce optimal signals. And that's the reason why the indicator I'll be looking at today was developed. This is based on RSI, but with some fundamental differences. Let's take a closer look at the stochastic RSI. This is just the second indicator that we've looked at in the Spotlight on Indicators series. If you want to see the episodes concerning the first indicator, the Ichimoku, then you can find a link to the entire playlist in the description. Now, way back at the beginning of the series, I requested that viewers send in suggestions for indicators they wanted me to perform analysis on. And I have to thank everybody that responded to that. In all, there were 42 indicators suggested by 33 people. So there's a number of people that suggested multiple. But there were four individuals, all who mentioned RSI in one form or another. Two people specifically asked for the stochastic RSI, one for the original RSI, and one wanted me to look at smoothed RSI in combination with other indicators. But don't worry if I didn't choose your indicator, there were a number of other indicators on the list that also piqued my interest. And so I'll be looking to cover those in the future. Now, stochastic RSI wasn't an indicator that I'm familiar with at all. And as I started to look at this, I thought that it made a really good candidate for analysis because of a number of issues with RSI that this indicator supposedly resolves. The first of those is that very often RSI can oscillate between the overbought and oversold regions for extended periods of time without actually reaching those oversold or overbought regions. And sometimes this is despite even large fluctuations in the price. And so taking a look at the price chart here, we can see for this period of time where the price action is pretty much in a trading range, there are actually some fairly significant swings during that range. But if we take a look at the standard RSI indicator below, you'll see that that fluctuates between the overbought region and the oversold region for an extended period of time. And so if you were looking to use RSI in order to trigger different trades during this range to take advantage of these swings, then you wouldn't be getting any overbought or oversold signals. But if we now show the stochastic RSI below, we can see it's a different story. Here, almost all of the swings in price during this trading range are registering as either oversold or overbought throughout the duration of that price action. And so potentially here, if we were looking to trade these swings, the stochastic RSI would be providing the signals, whereas of course the standard RSI didn't. The second characteristic worthy of note is that because RSI is a momentum based oscillator, when it does become overbought or oversold in a strong trend, it can stay there for extended periods of time. 
And so if you're a trader like me that likes to use pullbacks as an opportunity to get into trends, then the RSI would struggle again to provide signals to enter on the trend continuations. And so again, looking at a chart here that has a fairly considerable downtrend, you'll see that as the trend begins to come down here, the RSI is very much in the oversold region. And then as we get this pullback here, which could potentially be a good place to get into this trend, you'll notice that the RSI does not reach the overbought region. And likewise, we have another couple of opportunities here that might potentially be used. But again, the RSI stays in the neutral zone. But once again, if we now take a look at the stochastic RSI, you'll see here the pullback does indeed register as overbought on this indicator. And equally, as we get these more minor pullbacks here, again, you can see that the stochastic RSI registers as overbought, which again could provide a potential entry signal. So the bottom line here is that the stock RSI appears to be more sensitive to price movements. And I think there's a reason for this. Because the stochastic calculation is performed on the RSI values as opposed to the price values, I think it's looking at relative performance compared with recent history as opposed to a more generalized analysis of the absolute price changes. So let's learn a little bit more about stochastic RSI. It was developed in 1994, and this is actually 16 years after the original RSI was developed. And the important difference in this indicator is that it's almost an indicator of an indicator. So as I said before, the stochastic calculation is performed on the RSI values, not price action. And so as a potential disadvantage of this, it is further removed from the raw price action. However, as you've seen in the charts, it does look as though this could potentially offer better trading signals for a number of scenarios. And I say here that it could be more useful than RSI. And there's a reason for that, because at the moment, I have no idea. But this will be the primary purpose of the analysis that I undertake over the coming episodes. So I'll be using this methodology, the same as I used for the Ichimoku indicator. I'll be doing some initial investigation of the indicators themselves, followed by some systematic and quantitative analysis using backtesting. And I'll also try to determine which filters might be most appropriate to trade in conjunction with the RSI and stochastic RSI. Finally, if there are any specific implementation tasks that would need to be performed in order to use this in a trading environment, I will try to cover those as well. Now, I'm a firm believer that you can't just use an indicator against price without fully understanding the messages that that indicator is providing. To do that, you need to understand the calculation. And so if we're thinking about understanding the stochastic RSI, first of all, we of course have to fully understand the basic RSI because that is the foundation for the stochastic calculation. And so in the next episode, I'll be looking at this topic of understanding RSI thoroughly and focusing predominantly on overbought and oversold signals. In the following episode, I'll be looking specifically at RSI divergences. And only with this as a foundation will I then move on to the stochastic RSI itself and start to look in a bit more detail at how this might address these issues of RSI that we've touched on today. Before you go, would you like to find out more about how DarwinX helps thousands of traders just like you to attract investor capital? If so, either click on the DarwinX logo on the screen or find other links in the video description below. Now, until next time, trade safe.